I've been using the ATEM Mini Pro ISO to record my podcast and switch cameras at source, and it's been unbelievable. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll show you my entire process on how I edit multi-channel sequences and export things with ease, saving a crazy amount of time in my edits. Internet, welcome back. It's your boy Robert T. Garden here again with another video. If you're new here, welcome. Today we are talking about the A10 Mini Pro ISO, specifically how to record podcast setups, video podcast setups, and how I'm using this to save me an unbelievable amount of time in the editing and post-production process. I'm gonna go over the benefits of this A10 Mini Pro, show you my entire setup on the audio and the video side, and if you stick around to the end, I'll show you exactly how I'm editing these things in post so you can do it too inside Adobe Premiere. Mirror. Now, if you're looking at this video, my assumption is that you probably know about the A10 Mini Pro and that you're kind of curious in terms of what's going on. A lot of people are using this from a streaming setup and it's fantastic from that standpoint too, but I opted to use it from a podcasting, a multi-channel podcasting setup, uh, and it's been unbelievable for me. You can record or stream live onto multi-platforms where this thing is concerned and kind of set it up in a desktop setup like I have here. However, I'm moving around to different locations and studios and setting up three different cameras, importing audio into this and recording via a SSD drive directly onto this thing. And I can also use a Ninja 5 Atomos or like the Black Magic, uh, whatever their thing is. I'll put up an image on the screen right now of that monitor as well. You get uh, ProRes RAW with those types of recordings as well. But I'd like to first talk about the difference between the A10 Mini and the A10 Mini Pro ISO. So originally I ended up buying the A10 Mini Pro, which is a four channel HDMI in. It has the ability to connect live via ethernet to a computer so you can switch via computer and also has the ability to record a single feed out from your program monitor onto an SSD. Now that may be fine and work well for you, uh, but for me, I actually had the need to record all of the cameras as streams in addition to what my program monitor was showing me as well. For the uninitiated, your program monitor is exactly what you're switching between. So it's what the actual viewer would see at the end of the day. So it's switching between one, two, three, four input sources so that you can see in real time what's going out of the feed, whether that's a stream or a live recording. Now for me, I had the need to put my other cameras and record my other cameras as well, because if for some reason in post, either I missed a switch or we needed to switch camera angles for some particular reason, whether it's additional promo assets or the client needed a different angle for that particular setting, I had the ability to use those cameras and I wasn't limited to what was going out on the program feed itself. So the ISO allows you to do that, which is why I opted for this. Not only does it record the program feed, but it records all four inputs at the same time to an external SSD. We'll talk about the SSD in just a second, but just to give you guys a heads up on the difference between the Mini Pro and the Mini Pro ISO, that is the difference. There's a decent price increase there. I think it's about two to $300 between the two, but for me and for my needs, the time that it saves on the back end and the ability to have those cameras was well worth the increase in cost. And so that's why I opted for the Pro ISO rather than just the Pro. Now let's get into my setup and how I put this thing together. Now, all of the A10 Mini Pros work off of an HDMI feed. So the first thing you're going to need to do is have a camera that's set up to have an HDMI feed out of your camera that can go into the A10 Mini Pro. Uh, for these things I'm using, well, for all things, I'm using Sony Alpha cameras. And so what I did was set up my Sonys, make sure that my angles are correct. And then I used a longer HDMI cord to go directly into the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Now you may need to have to configure your camera needs in terms of the HDMI cords uh, according to what camera that you have. I have a few cameras that have a regular HDMI to HDMI. I have a few that have a HDMI micro to HDMI regular. Uh, there's a bunch of ways of doing that. Maybe you have an SDI out into HDMI, but you have to find a way of going into HDMI into the A10 Mini Pro. So set up my cameras and my angles, and then I go HDMI out into the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Another thing that you're gonna wanna make sure you do is that your HDMI feed out of the camera is a clean HDMI feed, meaning there's nothing that's on the screen when it's going to display. You don't want any of the you know metering modes or any of that type of stuff to be showing in your camera feed. Uh, you just want to clean HDMI out and just make sure that you check if you're shooting Canon, Nikon, all those types of things that you can clean your HDMI feed. But if you're using a monitor, an external monitor, usually most of those things are already set up for you. So HDMI goes into the A10 Mini Pro. Let's move on to audio. 
Now, in most instances for these recordings, we're using some external audio capture. Uh, most of the time, what we're doing is the Zoom H6. It's a four channel XLR in. You have the ability to have quarter inch phone plugs as well. Uh, we're using your standard Shure kind of podcasting microphones and they go into a cloud lifter, which then goes into the Zoom H6. We record audio live on that Zoom H6. However, I take a line out feed out of the front of the Zoom H6 and I put that into the mic one input in the A10 Mini Pro ISO. That way I have real audio that I can mix and configure after the fact in post, but I'm getting a line in feed from the mic line so that I can sync that audio up in post after the fact. Once I've got my HDMI feeds done, my audio feeds in, the next thing is to configure how I'm going to record these things. And like I mentioned, it's those fast SSD drives. Now the back of the A10 mini has a USB-C output, which I use to hook up an SSD drive. Now what I choose to use are these SanDisk Extremes. I have one terabyte, uh, a bunch of different copies of these types of things. They're fairly cheap, about 125 to 150 bucks for a terabyte, uh, and they're very fast. So the write speed on these things is commiserate with being able to accept a four HDMI signal uh, well, five technically, the program monitor and all four inputs that are being recorded at the same time. You can configure the type of quality that you want, but for me, HyperDeck High is just where I let everything live because I want the highest quality video capture to be recorded on the A10 Mini Pro. So I'm going out of the A10 Mini with the USB Type-C into these SanDisk Extremes, and you can configure exactly how you want your files to be recorded. Now that we're talking about the files, let's go in and look at what the directory looks like here. Now what I think is really cool about the A10 mini is that you can go into the software, whether you're using USB or ethernet, uh, and you can configure the project title and the types of quality that you want. Now from there, what's going to be saved on this SSD is a directory that has all of the audio inputs and all five video feeds. Now regardless of how many video feeds you have, the A10 mini is going to record all five inputs. That's the program monitor and all four HDMI inputs. Now, the cool thing is that even if you don't have a camera uh, on one of those HDMIs, it's just recording a black file, which isn't a ton of data that it's recording. So it kind of saves you on that side, but at least you're going to get all five of those inputs. Not only that, it's going to save a Blackmagic DaVinci file uh, for you to pull in. And apparently there's a way of taking that DaVinci file, that project file, and using the XML data to translate that into a Premiere Pro file. That's the word on the street. However, at this point, I haven't been able to figure out how to convert those things. If you guys know how to do that or have any more intel, leave it down in the comments below, not only for me, but your fellow viewers, because I'm thinking that that would be really helpful. Uh, obviously, ATEM is a Blackmagic product, hence why that is a DaVinci file, but it'd be really cool if you could use that in terms of a system agnostic way using the XML to kind of load up what that session file looks like. Now, the last part of this tutorial that I think is going to be really helpful for you guys is to see exactly how I'm setting these edits up and what they look like. So for that, let's jump on into Premiere and I'll be able to show you exactly what I'm doing there. So inside of Premiere, you can see that I've got my audio, my footage, and my sequence folders. I'm gonna run you through exactly what comes out of the ATEM and how I set it up here in Premiere. Each camera has its own audio feed, as you can see, and then each mic input has its own feed as well. Down here, I've got each individual zoom track, so one for each speaker. And moving on to the video ISO files, here's every camera that you can see right? And then here is the main cut as I was switching in real time that was going on. You can see that it's going in between cameras of what I put together. Now, this is all of the stuff that I need. And usually what I end up doing is right clicking on the main file and creating a new sequence from clip. Once I've got that done, you can see this is that file right here. I start to bring in and stack each individual camera on top of that just so you can see that I have cameras one, two, and three, and my main source is going to be channel one. So what I end up is with four video layers with the mic lines that are there as well, and then I bring my audio in, the zoom audio here, uh, on the bottom, right? And so once I do that, I use Pluralize to synchronize all the camera and audio, and I have this synced podcast 
track or, or sequence, excuse me, that has all four of my video files, my main video program and the three cameras that I was switching in between. It's got all of the audio and then the two zoom files that are coming out of the recorder. Once I do that, I right click on that sequence, this sync, synced sequence. Man, that is a lot of S's right there. Sally sells seashores by the sea, seashells. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. You know, I, I, got, I, I got the diction going down here. Now, once I do that, I have this synced podcast. I'm going to right click that, go new sequence from clip. And then I can take this sequence here and it's going to be a multi channel sequence. I can right click enable multi-channel, all stuff that I've done already. And now what I have here is the ability to have the main program file up here, like you'll see, let's switch to the essentials view so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, this is the main camera that I have back and forth. But if I make a mistake in real time, like I did here, I have the ability to say, oops, I actually wanna stay or switch back to this camera because I missed the switch in real time. I wanna switch back to this camera, switch to camera two, which is the response to that particular question. I let him go and switch to camera one back here. Now, just so you can see what happened is there was a question being asked here, right? So let's just make this a little bit bigger. So we've got our host asking a question based off of this audio right here and there is a response, but if I leave it on camera one, I didn't switch the response, okay? Oops, damn, made a mistake. And if I was only using the A10 Mini Pro, I'd have no option but to just leave it the way it was. But I'm using the Pro ISO, which means that I can go back, switch this camera to number two, and now I have the question and the response, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, I did that one more time because, you know, it's an hour and 90, almost two hour podcast. I'm entitled to make a mistake or two over two hours. You can see over here I did the same thing. And so that's why I use the ISO files to be able to move things around and edit if I need to. But most of the time, I'm just letting the camera switch that I use in real time as the main camera when I go into post. And it saves me a ton of time. Instead of having to go back and switch cameras in the edit, over three different cameras and rewatch two hours worth of podcast that I was sitting live in the, the actual episode, recording it in real time. I can go back, make the notes that I made on my phone, go and make those edits in the, the session that I have. And now I'm ready to present a rough copy for the client to watch, give me notes on, and then go back and export it. So as you can tell, the A10 Mini Pro is going to save you a ton of time in post. It's a small uh, investment in terms of the uh, gear and the equipment that you need to buy, assuming that you have cameras and the audio setup. Uh, but what you get in terms of time saving and cost saving in the back end, being able to have your edit already laid out and the ability to go back and add in individual cameras for not only the original episode, but the promotional material as well. It's an unbelievable time slaver. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video like the damn video if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I don't know what the hell you're doing of course this video was valuable to you and if I don't see you in the past year I'll see you in the future this is Robert Teagar with another video in the can I'll see you in the next one peace